today we are to solve a chess puzzle that originally comes from a game that has gone down to history as the Immortal Game. Well, it was on June the 21st in 1851 that this game was played between Adolf Andersen and Lyle Kedasitsky and was in fact an informal game that was played during a break in another tournament in Simpsons in the Strand. The game received this unusual name four years after it was played. It was namely published in the chess magazine La Regance and has impressed the world's chess players since then. This game is also acclaimed as an excellent demonstration of the style of chess play in the 19th century, where rapid development and attack were considered the most effective way to win, where many gambits and counter gambits were offered, and not accepting them would be considered slightly ungentlemanly, and where material was often held in contempt. These games, with their rapid attacks and counterattacks, are often entertaining to review, even if some of the moves would no longer be considered the best by today's standards. What we will do now is to skip to the end of the immortal game. It is white that checkmates black in two moves. So let's see if you can find the checkmate that Adolf Andersen found in 1851. Good luck! In this position, white has a clear material disadvantage by being two rooks and a bishop down. But we should here remember that Anderson, playing white in this game, sacrificed in order to get to this position where he could checkmate in two moves. You see that the black king has no escape squares at all, and that means that we indeed can checkmate. And the question is just how? We have here three ways to check, and that is with either bishop to c7, bishop to e7, or queen to f6. And none of these moves looks quite good actually, but there is one that is the right move of course. If the bishop goes to c7, the knight just captures the bishop and there is no continuation after that. The same thing happens on bishop to e7 check, the knight captures again. But what if the knight wasn't guarding e7 at all? then the bishop move would be a checkmate. And the question is now, how do we get the knight to stop not guarding e7 anymore? Well, we do that by moving the queen to f6 with a check. The king can't go anywhere, his only options are to capture the queen or to block the check with the knight. If the knight now captures the queen, we get what we've always wanted to get e7 is now unguarded, so we can move the bishop to e7 with a checkmate. Remember that the bishop is guarded by the knight on d5. And if the knight goes to e7 instead of capturing the queen, then we just take the knight with either the bishop or the queen checkmate again. Well, the very bold sacrifices made by Andersen to finally secure the victory have made this game one of the most famous chess games of all times. Andersen gave up both rooks and a bishop, then his queen, checkmating his opponent with his three remaining minor pieces. Well, the best part is that you managed to solve the chess history's most famous game. So congratulations.